Cassie Skirbo is best known for her roles in the iconic Sharknado films. She's also vice president of the anti-bullying PSA, Boo to Bullying, where she's working to eradicate bullying all over the nation. This time, Cassie stars in Sharknado 6, where her character returns <coughs> thanks to a little time travel twist. Let's take a look. What if Gil unleashed Sharknado during the Revolutionary War? Then there'd be no revolution. Then America wouldn't exist. Then we wouldn't exist. Come on! I haven't even seen this. Everyone put your hands together for Cassie Scarbo! Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I mean, we gotta get straight into this Sharknado. <laughs> yes, yes. Sharknado 6. Did yes. you ever think that was gonna be reality? I um, mean, that's, that's amazing. No, I didn't even think Sharknado <laughs> 1 was gonna be anything. Um, it wasn't even called Sharknado, it was called Dark Skies. And when we found out the title was gonna be called Sharknado, we were like, oh, oh no, oh my, like, <laughs> we can't be on IMDb really? under something titled Sharknado. Like, how do you get me off this thing? <laughs> and um, now I'm, I'm very grateful to be a part of Sharknado, Absolutely. obviously, because we're on number six. Crazy. So, so yeah, cool. Very crazy. And I'm super excited because your character is coming back through the power of time travel. <laughs> yes. That's yes. super cool. Because, you know, uh, spoiler alert, you had died. Yes, I died. I did. <laughs> you died. Now you're she coming did. back. How cool is that? And like, what does that mean? <laughs> what does any of it yeah. mean? I ask this every day on set. I don't know. Um, no, it's uh, it's great. I mean, we go, we start in pre in a prehistoric era. Um, Tara's character. Uh, has a pet pterodactyl named Tara. <laughs> um, and we are riding dinosaurs and fighting megalodons and go all the way into King Arthur time period Ooh. to, yeah, to um, uh, the Revolutionary War. Which, saw that clip, which yeah. yes, I didn't even see that clip. I did ADR two days for that, so I don't know how that got here, but <laughs> I guess You're my like, ADR I don't went watch well. These movies. <laughs> <laughs> I do, I do. I'm, I'm excited. This, obviously, you know, I watch them at the premiere yeah. <laughs> and uh, call it a day. No, um, <laughs> they're fun. They're fun. They're fun. Is is sci-fi like your thing? No. Like, are you like, what's like your type of like the movie that you're like drawn to? Like, is this like a genre that you're very into? I mean, I like the fact that I get to play a sounds silly. Yeah, that's talking about Sharknado, but that I play um, a very female empowered character. Mm -hmm. In number five, she has her own army, the Sharknado Sisterhood. Yes. Woo! Um, yeah, that's yeah, right. girl power. Um, so I really enjoy that. I love action. Um, I'm kind of a tomboy at heart, so that's all really fun for me. But honestly, when people ask, like, you know, what, it, you know, what kind of role? do you, like what, what, what would be your ideal role? For me, it's about the writing. It really, mm -hmm. it just depends on the script and how um, that writer's words, you know, how they touch me and, and what they mean to me and, and it doesn't really have any, it's not really any, a specific genre. Right, right. Yeah. so. Right. But it must be cool to be part of a uh, franchise like this where like imagination's limitless. Yeah, it you, is. Yeah. I really want, I don't know what these writers, <laughs> what they're on, <laughs> like this. Yeah. But um, no, it's it's so much fun, and honestly, every time these uh, these come out, year six now, it just feels like we're having a party with the whole world. Mm -hmm. It really does because it airs, you know, all around. And um, last year, I got to do press in Spain and Portugal, and just having all these girls, you know, running around like we want to be Sharknado hermanas, <laughs> like the Sharknado <laughs> sisters. And I was like, oh my god, that's the coolest thing ever. So. Um, it's it's great. My yeah. ten year old cousin Ava loves Sharknado. She loves <laughs> yes. sharks. It's a when she's at camp right now. And I'll I'll write her. Um, <laughs> I'll tell her you're on. She'll freak out. Yes. She loves oh it. my gosh. Please yeah. Ask her if she wants to be recruited. Okay. It's I will. Oh I definitely my will. God. That's Ava girl. Will. I got you. It is. Priority mail. That's priority camp. mailing that right now. She's gonna run. She's gonna come back from camp. So what is it like being on set? Because you mentioned all these different scenarios. So is there a particular day that was really fun or crazy? Anything happen? I mean, every day is like that. <laughs> I just remember this. This year, um, we were there was just one moment we were sitting on this this green covered figure because we were doing green screen shots, and it was supposed to be the pterodactyl, and we had like two pages of lines added that morning, and we're like, this is all over the place, and it's not like any of it makes sense, so it's not like you're having actual dialogue about something serious. Mm -hmm. It's like you know, watch out for the megalodon, no, <laughs> beer left, and and it just got to a point where our director just started feeding us our lines, and then we'd take a beat, and the person behind us, he would feed them their lines, and we're on, like in the middle of Romania, sitting mm -hmm. on like a green 
green fake pterodactyl <laughs> six years later. And I was just like, what is this? Like, how are, like, we're in the middle of Romania <laughs> shooting this crazy movie right now on a fake pterodactyl dodging sharks. Like, <laughs> I just remember we were so tired and me, Tara, and I and all looked at each other and we're like, wow, like this is just <laughs> ridiculous. And that's, you know, yeah, one I, of many. I can imagine, like, being so tired and then, like, seeing that and you're like, is this real or, like... Am I dreaming? Am I dreaming? Yeah. There's also a scene where Tara and I, that was written in last minutes, so we were very confused, <laughs> where we're using her head, um, but her other head, it's a long story, yeah. as, like, <laughs> her eyes are now laser beams and we're trying to fight <laughs> the Sharknado with her head. And me and her just look at each other and we're like... Wow. I, no, like, I don't think we could do this. We, we could not stop laughing. Oh there was God. no oh way. God. I don't think male sheeps have had to do that, so. <laughs> exactly, yeah. exactly. It's There's hard. also like a lot of scenes of like fighting inside of sharks, right? Like you're like cutting your way out of them and stuff. I, we have, April gave birth in a shark. What? I, yes, one of the characters gave birth inside of a shark in space. Um, wow. I, wow. <laughs> wow. I have, yes, been eaten by a shark. Yes. Um, many people have been, many cameos have been eaten by a shark. Yes. Uh, so I don't know why this is like a phenomenon and why everyone wants, when they, when, when they're, when they sign on to the movie, why they all want to be eaten or cut out of a shark, <laughs> but it's like a thing now. Yeah. Um, but to be completely honest, I'm not even kidding you, these movies are challenging because you're walking such a fine line of trying to keep it funny, but like, playing into the joke, like mm -hmm. just the right mm -hmm. amount. And half the time you're, you know, you're thrown scenes that day because they decided to add Fabio in or whoever it may be. And now like the whole schedule's turned around or you're looking at a little sticker and having to envision the most unrelatable circumstances. And like, I would rather like have like a breaking down crying scene with someone telling me they're leaving me or like they just got cancer because it's more relatable than this Sharknado you're telling me to like envision, you know? Yeah. Um, so it's it's oddly, we it's true, it's a little bit, it is a little bit challenging. Yeah. It's so bizarre, so. It's good like boot camp though, I'm sure. Like totally. once you can do that, you can do anything. It's like going to improv class, basically. Oh, <laughs> yes and, I'm all about that. Yeah, yes. I love improv. Um, yes and. Yes and, always. I just took uh, some UCB classes. Oh. I'm in one, I'm in 201. Yeah! <laughs> awesome. I'm, a, yeah. I'm a show next week. Um, awesome. I to take a little bit of a term, I, 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 this is incredible work that you're doing. You attended Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida, and you've been very active in uh, March for Our Lives. And I think we actually have a clip of you sending love to your community. I just want everyone to take a look at it. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Hold on to each other close. I can't wait to come home and be with you all. Keep using your voices. Keep marching. Your stories are not in vain, and you are just so loved and supported, and you are just my heroes. Thank you for being courageous. Thank you for being brave. Thank you for taking a stand. I love my community. I'm watching the way you guys are sticking together. I've always loved our community. We are so blessed to have the community that we have. Yeah. I, I really admire that tremendously, and especially in our time right now, you're using your platform to speak out, and especially you're so connected to your community. Can you tell us about like what prompted you to make that video and getting other celebrities and your friends involved to do yeah, that? Yeah, totally. Um, I actually just explained it to on, on Girl Boss, which I was so happy to write an essay for. Um, I found out about the shooting um, right before I had left for Romania, mm -hmm. and of course, all I wanted to do was go home. And the fact that I had to fly completely, you know, the complete opposite direction, just further and further away from home was, was gut-wrenching, gut and um, it was breaking my heart. And I was like, I, I can't just sit here and film this movie. All I'm, all I'm doing is actually thinking about my school and my people, and one of the victims was a family friend of ours, Meadow Pollock, and I just couldn't take my mind off of it, um, obviously. So I was like, I have to do something, and the least I could do was put together a video to you know, just send our love to the students. Like the fact that they had to go back into this mm. school again mm -hmm. and face these hallways and those teachers and, um, you know, go into these classrooms where some of them had witnessed murders. Mm -hmm. um, I just couldn't even imagine what that would feel like. So I just wanted to send something uh, uplifting. And um, in the video, I promised to um, continue on and, and you know, uh, speak up, speak out, and speak up for them. Mm. And uh, I'm currently producing a documentary um, on on the the whole entire scenario, a docu series that I'm very excited to, for it to come out. I think it's gonna um, 
I think it's going to be very impactful. And uh, right. there's a lot of things I think people are, are going to be surprised about. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, producing the documentary and working with Meadows Movement. Um, they're right now working to build a park in her name. Oh. And, mm -hmm. yeah, they'll also have That's a amazing. memoriam for the other 16 victims. Um, and, yeah, I mean, I'm just any, anything and everything I can do mm -hmm. to obviously help in any way put an end to this or to just have safer schools, yeah. mm -hmm. simply, um, it, I'm, I'm really fighting for it and I will continue to do that. Absolutely. Yeah. 100%. I, you're doing, I mean, amazing work. You're also the vice president of Boo to Bullying, yes. um, which we learned about. Mm -hmm. um, will you share a little more information about that? Absolutely. I actually just got off a red eye from mm -hmm. our fourth annual yes. Take a Bite Out of Bullying. I married the world of Sharknado. Thank you. <laughs> and Charity. It's amazing. Yes. I was like, how can I leverage this? Um, and, you know, marry both worlds. But um, I started out as a girl, the girls' youth ambassador. And um, when I was 20, 21, 20, 21. And when I was 25, I, after I had created this event and it was so successful and the vice president had... Um, decided to, to stand down. Um, they had asked me to come on board as vice president. I was like, oh, <laughs> I mean, I'm 25 years old, but I'm like, I think I can handle this. Yeah, like, let's do it. Let's go for it. Why not? Like, I have so many ideas. So this is great because now I'm in the position to actually, you know, for them to be able to come to fruition. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, we've been, you know, working on our pilot programs and our mentorship and um, just got $100,000 from our new yeah. national ambassador. Oh, wow. yesterday. Wow. Um, happy to embark on this new journey with him. He, um, Richie Incognito, he, you know, says that he's endured both being the bully and bullying. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it's really cool that he wants to do something positive and that he's, um, you know, he made this wonderful apology video and he's ready to take a step forward. And um, he donated this money so that we can start football camps mm -hmm. and do more with our programs. So um, we're really excited about that. Because I think that so many times celebrities um, or football players, whoever it may be, they come out with stories about being bullied, which yeah. um, is horrible. But not very often do people stand up and come, you know, talk about the fact that they were maybe a bully at some point in time and they're owning up to it. And, you know, we all make mistakes and how to move forward and how to, um, I guess, turn something bad into something good. Uh, so very excited about the future of Boo to Bullying. And, um, you know, we just, we have an amazing board and I'm, I'm really proud of, of my Boo to Bullying family. We started with literally nothing, <laughs> nothing. So <laughs> I would imagine amazing. with the work you're doing, do you have a lot of like young people reach out to you on social media and sort yeah. of share their stories and how powerful is that? It's, ex oh my God, that's I think to me more important than anything. I've always said that since I was a kid. It's using my platform to be able to help people in any way that I can, literally any way. Um, it's, I love, I, I love doing that. So um, it, on the plane yesterday, a little girl, uh, not little girl, a, a young woman had reached out about something, an internal battle that's something she's going through. And um, I didn't even want the plane to take off. I was like, no, I can't lose reception. I want to finish this conversation. Um, so I love the fact that people reach out, and they do, and um, that's why I do it. So keep reaching out. Yes. Um, any of our handles, I'm at Cassie Skirbo on everything. So. I love that. Well, and I love that you have this really fun Sharknado platform, but yeah. you are really using it to like push forward a message, and that's of really course, powerful. Yeah. So thank you so much for joining us today. Guys, give it up thank for Cassie. You. Thank you for having me.